Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer. A couple weeks ago when I was getting my kids ready for school, I decided to make a few bookmarks for some of Colin's favorite teachers from the past. And I just decided to go ahead and create a video out of it in case anybody was interested in doing the same. So I created these bookmarks out of a die and then I did some coloring with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. So I have lots of tips along the way. This is a pretty basic design, but I'm going to share some tips with you. So this little bookmark slides over the pages of a book, which I'll show you later in this video. And it was actually created by doing partial die cutting of a banner die. So this is the banner die that I used. It's from a set from Create a Smile called Stacked Pierced Banners. These are fun because the larger the banner die, the bigger the little holes that it cuts around the inside edge of the die, just for a fun finishing touch. And you can see there are some smaller banners there too. For this project, I'm going to be using the second largest banner. Now again, we're going to do partial die cutting so that we actually have two of these banner die cuts back to back so that we can fold it over over a page. So I have a long strip of white cardstock here and I'm going to tape the die in place onto my paper so that it doesn't shift as we're doing this. So I put this on top of my bottom cutting plate. You can do this with any die cut machine. Now when I take the top cutting plate, I'm going to position it so that a little bit of the die is hanging out. So there's a beveled edge on the edge of this die cutting plate. And I'm just going to set it so that see how that right edge, that flat edge is kind of hanging out there. So no pressure will be applied on that part of the die. That will allow it to be connected to the die cutting that we're going to do a little bit later on the other side. So I'm just positioning that perfectly and now I'm going to hold those plates and run it through my die cut machine. Again, that flat edge there on the right will not cut through because there's no pressure because I have that top cutting plate kind of offset. So now we can take the die out and you will see that that one edge did not cut through. So we can make one long continuous piece. So now I'm going to flip this around and die cut on the other side. I'm gonna make sure I line up the sides of my die so that they're even with what I've already die cut. I'm going to tape that into place and again I will position my cutting plate so that that right flat edge does not cut. So it's kind of hanging out off the edge of my cutting plate. Again I'm going to run this through and I'll have one long continuous piece. Now there will be a little area where you're going to have to cut through. You can either use your scissors. I decided to use a straight edge and a craft knife just to go ahead and continue cutting that along. Now, if you didn't want to go through this partial die cutting, you could just die cut two different banner pieces and connect them later when we do the laminating, which you'll see in a bit, and I'll talk about that. I think this banner shape is great for a bookmark, but you really could do this with any dies you might have. You could do some partial die cutting to connect the tops of, of two hearts so that you have a heart shaped bookmark if you want to. Lots of things you could do with this. And I went ahead and scored right down the middle and folded it. So now we have a fun bookmark. I will laminate this later, but you could leave it as is. You don't need to laminate it at all. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So at this point, I was running out of time. I'll be honest with you, my daughter was about to wake up from her nap, so I needed to do some fast coloring. I grabbed a new stamp set from a new stamp company called Sunny Studio. This is school time. One of my longtime blog readers uh, has started this company, and she is the sweetest lady, and I'm really honored to be using her stamps. I am a big fan of making teacher cards, so a stamp set like this is perfect for me. I'll be using the thank you teacher message from this stamp set on each of the bookmarks. And by the way, some people have asked why I kind of trim out a little bit of my video when I go to stamp. That's because my giant head gets in the way of the camera. And I really don't think you want to look at the back of my head. So that's why I do it. I have to stamp looking clearly straight down through the stamp when I do my stamping. And so sometimes my head gets in the way and I just didn't think you wanted to look at my gray hairs that are popping in. So anyways, that's why I do that. And for a, one of these bookmarks, I will be stamping the apple from the stamp set I just showed you. And on the other two bookmarks, I'm going to stamp a flower. This is from a Create a Smile stamp set. This It's called Magic Flowers. There are some great simple flowers in this set that are great to practice coloring. You know me, I love to practice my coloring. However, I encourage you to look at some of the samples that they have on their blog, because some people did some amazing coloring with these flowers. There's a lot you can do with them. I think I forgot to mention also that the black ink that I'm using here is Hero Arts Dye Ink. That's my favorite black ink for almost any kind of stamping. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do some coloring with Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens. And I'm not gonna use water this time. I'm just gonna use them as is for some fun blending. Done many videos on these markers and I'll link to them below. Now in one of my videos, I showed how I created little swatches of the color and put them on the lids and put glossy accents on top. Well, a few people have emailed me and said that the glossy accents actually change the color of the ink underneath it. That didn't happen to me. For some reason, mine have not changed color, but it's something that you will want to keep in mind, and I've made note of that in my other videos. If you are concerned that glossy accents might change the color of your ink swatch dots that you put on the top of your cap, you could instead use clear embossing powder on top of it for a coating, or you can just leave it as is. I really don't think you need to have the coating. I just did the glossy accents because I thought it was pretty. The glossy accents didn't change mine, so maybe you've lucked out. I think my glossy accents are older, and maybe that has something to do with it. So now I'm doing some basic blending with these Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens without water. That's one of the great things about these markers. You can use them with or without water. And again, I'll show a link to videos that I've done showing how to use these in my description below and in the annotations here. So you can just blend darker and lighter colors together just by overlapping them. And you can see how I blended the dark and light greens and even reds and yellows, and they just blend beautifully. Now you may have noticed in my speed at which I'm trying to move in order to get this done that I went outside the lines a little bit. One of the fun things about these markers, since they're kind of like a watercolor marker, is you can use water to kind of remove some of the color that goes on the outside. So you can see I just used a little bit of water to kind of remove that red that went to the outside. You could also use a white gel pen to do that, to just to cover it up. Now I wanted this to have some shimmer, so I'm coating it with a couple coats of Wink of Stella Clear Shimmer Pen. Now when I laminate this, that Wink of Stella just pops. It gets really intense and super sparkly, and it is so amazing. And I wish I could capture it in the photos or the videos, but I just can't. You're just going to have to trust me on it. Okay, now for the flowers. I decided, again, to keep this simple, but also add a little bit of the look of texture to it. So I go back in with my darkest color and just draw these lines kind of coming out from the center of the flower. Now, I don't know that any flower looks like this in nature, but in my imagination, I think it works just fine. So you can see here how I easily bend from a dark pink to a light pink out to the edge. Doesn't take any time at all. This kind of reminds me of the feel of blending with Copic markers, but a heck of a lot easier. At least it is for me. Now you can buy these markers individually. So if you wanted to try them out and see how they blend, I would recommend getting maybe a red, an orange, and a yellow and see how those blend together for you and decide if it's something that you would like to work with. I have lots of information, including all ink swatches of all the colors over on my blog, and I will link to that here. Again, I covered it with a Wink of Stellar, so it had lots of shine. I colored the other flower with some oranges and yellows, and now I decided I needed a leaf on those flowers. So you can see my lazy way of masking. I just use a little post-it note to block off the flower. You could cut a flower mask if you wanted to, but again, my, um, my timer is ticking in my head. So I'm stamping these little leaves off the edge of the flowers with that same Black Hero Arts dye ink. Now I really feel like I'm doing these Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens a disservice here because there is so much you can do with them. You can get really dark to light blending. You can blend crazy colors together. I'm just doing this the fastest way I know how, just so that I can get some color down on these and turn these into bookmarks. So please check out those other videos to see all that you can do with them. So I decided to laminate these so that they would be extra durable, but you could just leave them as is if you want to. After doing my video on the Heidi Swap Mink Machine that is meant for foiling, many people asked if you could use it for regular laminating. So I thought I would give it a try here. Now if you have a laminator, you can use that here instead. So I have some laminating material here. It's just two sheets and you put your paper in between it and run it through a laminator. So I'm taking my bookmark and I'm gonna put it between the two sheets and run it through my mink machine. Now I found the mink machine laminated beautifully. So that's a great thing because I can now use this tool for both foiling and laminating. So I don't have to have that extra laminator. However, keep in mind that you can use a laminator for this 
or you can use a laminator for foiling. The advantage of the Mink Machine is it has all these settings, zero through five, so there's more that you can do with it. However, either works just fine. It just depends on how much laminating or foiling you intend to do. And I will link to my videos on how to foil with a laminator here and how to foil with this Mink Machine here. This is the Mini Mink, which is a little bit smaller than the regular Mink and a better price point. I really like the size. It does up to six inches wide. So after this is finished running through, it's a little toasty to the touch at first, so just let it cool. And then I'm going to trim this edge off. I'm gonna leave a little bit of that lamination kind of sticking off the edge just so it stays nice and strong. Now I need to put that score back into the bookmark. So I'm just using my bone folder to really press into that score line so I can fold this. It's kind of hard to fold that lamination, especially if you're using a thick laminate, um, laminating sleeve, but this ended up scoring just fine and it'll be in a book so it will flatten with time. So I created three here. Now keep in mind, if you are going to laminate these, what I could have done is just die cut two white banners, just regular die cut, not that partial die cutting, and connected them together back to back in the laminating process. So that's one thing to keep in mind that would save you a little bit of time. But I think these bookmarks are a lot of fun. If you wanted to, you could try some ribbon across the top of one of them, or maybe some twine. I did it to one of them, but I decided to leave the others blank because I, I don't know, I kind of like the simple look a little bit better, but that is another option. So the way this works is you just slide it over whatever page you're on and there you have a fun bookmark. And by the way, I just started reading this book. I've heard a lot of good things about it. So I will link to that too. It's, it's a very good read. Okay, so anyways, there we have some quick bookmarks that you can do with your dies and also add some laminating so they're durable. If you are interested in the products I use, all the main products are linked below in my YouTube description. You can also go to my blog where I'll link to all of the products and have some more pictures and other information. I always appreciate you stopping by. I thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.